Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Go to combat, attack you. See if our opponent blocks. No. Alright, so let's Manamorphose. I mean, if we get lucky, it's not impossible we win this turn. Like, Mutagenic Growth would be great. Add some mana. Huh. <sighs> Mutagenic Growth. That is great. Uh, Mutagenic Growth, you Soulscar Mage? So now I think we win. <laughs> On turn two. Hey, you should have blocked. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, as we wait for M21 to come out, we are doing something that I'm really excited for. We are updating one of my favorite Budget Magic decks from the very distant past. If you have been watching Budget Magic since the beginning, like the literal beginning, I believe this deck, when we first played it, was the fifth ever budget magic all the way back in June of 2015 so five years ago it blows my mind that it's been that long that we've been doing budget magic uh, but that deck is blistering rage in the name it doesn't work as well today as it did back in 2015 at the time blister coil weird was one of the main cards of the deck but it's since been upgraded with soul scar mage but we're revisiting this deck and updating it for 2020 and I'm excited because this deck was spectacular the first time we played it it is essentially like a mono red prowess deck but not the typical mono red prowess deck instead it's like mono red prowess slash kiln fiend combo where we're trying to kill our opponent on turn two on turn three with a flurry of pump spells and then teamer battle rage on something like kill feeder monastery swift spear so anyway let's talk about the deck the 2020 version of blistering rage which again probably should get a better name these days maybe it's mono red kiln fiend i don't even know because blister coil weird isn't in the deck and jump into our game so blistering rage like i said it's essentially a kiln fiend combo deck kiln fiend two mana one two but when we cast it instant or sorcery it's plus three plus zero until end of turn so it's like super prowess for the most part we also have a couple of literal prowess one drops soul scar mage that's why blister coil weird is no longer in the deck soul scar mage is just an upgraded version of blister coil weird extra toughness so it doesn't die to like lava darts and stuff monastery swift sphere solid prowessy one drop so these are our creatures and these are actually some of our main combo pieces and as i mentioned before even though we have a lot of like prowessy creatures we're playing this deck in a very different way we're essentially a combo deck so what we are trying to do is stick one of our prowess creatures or even better a kiln fiend which is like super prowess and then we play some spells and finish it off with team or battle rage to give double strike and most likely trample or assault strobe and just a one of but a backup double strike spell to hopefully kill with a single attack so how do we build a soul scar mage or a swift spear or especially a kiln fiend into a one shot attack kills plan we got a bunch of pump spells we have brute force which is just a red giant growth plus three plus three for a single mana and remember kiln fiend gets plus three plus zero so if we cast a brute force on a kiln fiend we're actually getting plus six plus three which is insane for a single mana we have mutagenic growth free we don't even have green mana so we're always casting it for two life but these spells grow our threat that we're going to cast our double strike spell on and then we have a bunch of free spells which just add power to our kiln fiend trigger prowess on our other threats manamorphose free spell gives us a card back pyretic ritual just ramps us into our fast kills in theory we could kill on turn two with the help of pyretic ritual gut shot can take down creatures can go to the face another free spell crash through is especially nice with assault strobe giving all of our team trample and drawing a card also triggering prowess so let's wrap back around to our creatures how do we actually kill our opponent on turn two on turn three and there's actually a bunch of combinations what we're trying to count up to with this deck is making one of our creatures 10 power by casting spells and then having a double strike spell so for example something like kiln fiend on turn two turn three pyretic ritual that's gonna make kiln fiend four power brute force that's gonna make Make Kiln Fiend 10 power because it triggers Kiln Fiend and gives plus three plus three. And then Teamer Battle Rage with our last mana is going to make Kiln Fiend a 13 power trampling double strike attacker. Wins the game even through blockers on almost any board. Or we could have like Kiln Fiend, Mutagenic Growth, Gut Shot, Teamer Battle Rage. That's also going to get our Kiln Fiend up to like. 12 power i believe something like that so killing our opponent with one shot on turn three again we can even put these combinations together with swift spear or soul scar mage like for example turn one monastery swift spear turn two whatever turn three brute force brute force team or battle rage that's gonna get our monastery swift spear up to nine power hopefully with our attack on turn one or whatever or they play a shock land hopefully enough to kill our opponent on the spot we can also win 
with some combination of like brute force and mutagenic gross and manamorphosis and teamer battle rage. More importantly, while it doesn't happen super often, with the help of Pyretic Ritual, we can win on turn two with the deck. Turn one, Monastery Swift Spear or Soul Scar Mage. Turn two, Pyretic Ritual. Monastery Swift Spear up to two power. And then we use mutagenic growth to get Monastery Swift Spear up to five power. Then we can brute force to get Monastery Swift Spear up to nine power. Then teamer battle rage up to 10 power double striking, trampling, killing our opponent on the spot on tier two. So that's what the deck is trying to do. Mana base as low as possible, 16 lands, we don't want to flood out. Sideboard, we have a bunch more removal and lava dart and lightning bolt, dragon claw for the mirror, smash for artifacts, Tormod script for graveyards, and that is 2020 version of Blistering Rage. Without the blister coil weird, but still, uh, 2020 Blistering Rage, that's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump in some games, see if we get some turn two Swift Spear Soul Scar Mage kill, some turn three, killed feed, 13 power trampling, double striking, smashing your face kills. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Looking for some new Corset 2021 cards? Well, you can get them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom has Corset 2021 up for pre sale now, and you can check it out over at cardkingdom.com. All right, budget magic time. We are returning to a classic early budget magic deck. One of the earliest budget magic decks, Blistering Rage. Unfortunately, the name, the name doesn't work quite as good as it used to because we don't actually have Blister Coil weird anymore because <laughs> there's better versions, but idea is the same. Try to kill people on turn three, primarily with Kiln Fiend, but also other things, perhaps, possibly. Um, well, okay. Uh, this is a turn three kill if nothing goes wrong. Let's see what our opponent's up to. We are on the draw, unfortunately. I would like this hand even more if we were on the play. This is a deck that just likes being on a play, period, but we will keep. See what our opponent can do. So turn two, Kiln Fiend. Turn three, Manamorphose, Mutagenic Growth, Teamer Battle Rage. That is very lethal, even through blockers. Marsh Flats for our opponent. Cracks it. Swamp. Vizira, Sia. Sure. Well, Mountain Gill. Planes for our EP unit. Snow covered variety. Another Seer. And Doom Traveler. All right, so opponents running out of board. Gets and hits us. Sure, 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 sure. Well, the question's going to be does our opponent have removal? Kiln Feet. Got to dodge paths and fatal pushes. If our opponent just plays more creatures, we are perfectly fine with it. And our opponent probably thinks, oh, kill feed, sure, whatever. We can block that. Ooh, that's a tide taker. That's a tide taker. Godless Shrine. Tapped. Game! Got him. <laughs> got them, got them, got them. Opponent passes. Well, we will. Uh, let's see. Play a mountain. Go to combat. Attack. And opponent's gonna block. Sure. So we will Manamorphose. Oh, this deck's insane. It's insane when it does its thing. Trigger killed fiend. Draw a card. We will gut shot. Um yeah, I guess actually let's just go face. I don't think it matters what we do. Gut shot our opponent's phase. Trigger kill and fiend. Mutagenic growth, kill and fiend. And team or battle rage, kill and fiend. And uh that looks like eh, 30 damage here. Uh, 29, because our opponent did block. Well, you've been, you've been raged. <laughs> Woo, okay. Oh, I forgot how sweet this deck was uh, when, <laughs> when that happens. So we're going to bring in Lavadar. I think we're actually going to slightly slow down our deck and take out the Rituals. I mean, we still can win very quickly, but we're going to go down the Rituals. We're going to bring in the Lava Darts, which seem great against a deck that's all X1s. And we're going to bring in the Tormod's Crypt for a Assault Strobe. And uh, let's run it like that. That's fine. Well, that went well. I assume our opponent's probably going to bring in more removal or attempt to. Yeah, all right, that sounds good. We don't have the turn three combo kill, but we got stuff we can play, and we have some card draw. Carrion Feeder for our opponent. We might actually just kill Carrion Feeder before it can start going off with this Lava Dart. Plus, Lava Dart's good to have in the graveyard, because once it's in our graveyard, it's kind of a gut shot. 
if we don't mind sacking lands. It does mean we're not going to be playing Soulscar Mage, but, well, yeah, we're going to. We're going to Lava Dart. The problem is, once our opponent uh, grows it, or even just has another creature, then it's not going to be possible to just kill it. Marsh Flats for our opponent. Cracks it. Snow Covered Swamp. Thalia. Well, let's. Soulscar Mage. Soulscar Mage. Pass the turn. Uh, silent clearing for our opponent. Cruel celebrant. And Doom Traveler. Sure, 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 sure. I guess if our opponent has some sort of mastery animation, that would be less than optimal. Uh, well, we will. Lava Dart Thalia. Opponent gains a life. When you go to combat, we attack. Opponent trades in Doom Traveler, gains a life. Yeah, that's going to be the question. If our opponent has, like, Rally the Ancestors or Return to the Ranks or something, that could get us here. We kind of have a lot of damage next turn. We would like to get down our Kiln Fiend, but we kind of have a lot of damage, potentially. Opponent, another Cruel Celebrant. Well, Stuff Dying is good for our opponent. Gets him with the Cruel Celebrant. Hits us, sure. Well, I think we just play a Swift Spear, go to combat, attack with everything. Put on blocks and blocks. Well, gut shot our opponent. Get some triggers. Kill stuff, get drained a bit. Yeah, definitely a little worried about Rally the Ancestors. Play him out and pass the turn. Opponent's still at 19 because they've gained so much life. Vern Catacombs. Cracks Vern Catacombs. Uh-oh. Is, uh, is this Rally for Lethal? Zulaport Cutthroat. Well, that's not really for Lethal. What's the last guard? Tide Taker. Okay. That is acceptable. Opponent gets and hits us. Down to 10. Well, play Manamorphos, draw a card. The question's going to be, hmm, how aggressively can we go? Well, if we stay on defense, can we win here? We Manamorphos. We Manamorphos. All right, let's, let's keep Manamorphosing, see what happens. Manamorphos, get some triggers. Manamorphos, get some triggers. Play a mountain. Play a Kiln Fiend, go to combat, attack. Opponent blocks, and blocks. Now we get drained for a bundle. Yeah, we just gotta hope to dodge mass reanimation. So opponent, stand at 18, and I'll play Kiln Fiend again. Pass, pass the turn. I mean, next turn should be great, unless our opponent rallies. Okay, Desperation Sack. We like Desperation Sack. Stitcher Supplier mills some cards. So technically, that's another blocker. Trample would be decent. And Judge's Familiar. Okay. Opponent passes. Now let's... What happens if we just attack? Do we want to shoot down blockers? I think we do. So we'll gut shot... One, two, three. So we're going to go to one? Okay. So we gut shot Judge's Familiar. Paying mana. Hopefully this works the way I think it works. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Judge's Familiar dies. Opponent sacks, sure, gains a life. Then we Lava Dart, Stitcher Supplier, sacking a mountain. Get a bunch of triggers. This has got to be lethal. Get drained to four. Lava Dart, the Spirit, sack a mountain. Get drained. I think we're going to one life, but I think we win here. So we go to three. Kill all the blockers. Go to com Oh, we definitely win. Go to combat. Attack. I guess we don't even need the mutagenic growth, do we? Opponent blocks. Well, we might as well. Just to make sure. <laughs> Show how much damage our deck can really deal. And the answer is a ton. Oh, yeah. We had lethal and a half. And that is what Blistering Rage can do. Game one was a good example of why you play this deck. The turn three double strike jank him out kills. And then this was a good game of how we can kind of play a fair longer game. Like, opponent play creatures. We killed all their creatures. We attacked with our kill and feed. Opponent dies. Kill and feed. I, I mean, it dies to a lot. That's the downside. It does die to a lot. But when it's not dying, oh my goodness, Kiln Fiend. So good. So good. Oh, Blistering Rage. My it's a Blistering. Still seems decent, 2020. Sweet. All right, budget magic time. We are playing, oh boy, so many creatures. We are playing uh, Blistering Rage 2020 edition, and we're gonna keep this. It's a little weird that we've drawn <laughs> very close to half of our 12 creatures and one of our million spells, but we got a lot of one drops. <laughs> 
Uh, hopefully we find spells. This is the hand where if we can just like draw a land and play our board and then maybe draw a spell or two, it could go pretty well. Swift Spear. Uh, we would really like to draw land so we can do two things next turn or at least one two drop thing. Kelm Feed's so underrated. It really is. Any good flavor text in our, in our hand? It traps the explosion with its stony skin. Ooh, Delver. A calligraphy of combat is written with strokes of sudden blood. Ooh. Well, all right. Swift Spear. Go. Yeah, we definitely, we definitely need to land. This might be a trickier matchup just because our opponent presumably actually has burn spells of some kind. Do they get the lucky Delver flip? Yes. Oh, with a removal spell. Oh. That's bad news. All right. Bolt to Swift Spear. Well, that is the luck of the Delver. Not a land. We'll go to combat again and hit you. We definitely need to light up the stage because we got to hit land drops at some point. Opponent down to 14. Light up the stage. Please don't counter this. <laughs> we really need lads. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, boy. Breeding pool tapped. Yeah, this is, this might be a loss. <laughs> yeah. Where's uh, Where's our 15 other lands? Bone it. <laughs> Another, oh, the luck of the Delver. Um, a soul stroke has pretty good, pretty good flavor tags. When breaking someone's face, <laughs> when breaking someone's face once is just not enough. <laughs> uh, let's kill feed, go. Not a big fan of where we're at, though. Missing these land drops. Bow it. Combat. It's in hits us. Down to 11. And. Tarmogoyf. Well, go to combat. Attack. Yeah, opponent blocks. So we get to Pyretic Ritual. Ugh. All right. Yeah, got us. <laughs> well, that went a little worse. We missed land drops at our opponent. They had every bit of uh, interaction possible there. Huh. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, go down in the salt strobe. Go down a brute force. Go up to lava darts to kill the Dalvers. Try it like that. Yeah, opponent, those are the matchups that can be harder for our deck when our opponent just has an infinite amount of interaction. That is the, the easiest way to, uh, to slow down Blistering Rage for sure. Uh, we will play first and, well, okay. We need a team or battle rage to really make this hand sing, but it's not horrible. Breeding pool. More Delvers. Eh, opponent's not gonna flip it this time. No way. No way, no how. Get it with Soul Scare Mage at our opponent. Next turn we can do things. I don't think we can quite get to lethal. Maybe we can. So this is we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Do they get the Lucky Delver flip? New. No. Oh, opponent. Opponent, opponent. Plays a mountain. And passes. Well, let's Metamorphose. Get some triggers. Add some mana. Metamorphose. Get some triggers. Add some mana. Pyretic Ritual. Get some triggers. Add some mana. Pyretic Ritual. Get some triggers. Add some mana. Light up the stage. Get some triggers. Crash through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not bad. Not lethal, but that is a lot of damage. Go to combat. Attack. The problem is, so, I don't know. Maybe we should have waited. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well, and now we know why our opponent was leaving mana up. <laughs> oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. No Delver flip yet. Yikes. Wow, we spent our entire hand and got weathered this time. <laughs> All of our spells were mostly adding two damage and our opponent was gaining three, so we didn't actually gain anything from all that. Not great. Opponent gets in with Delver, sending a message. Um, well, go to combat, attack. Opponent blocks. Well, we will... Brute Force. Okay. Steam Vents tapped. So we kill the Goyf. We get to light up the stage. 
Uh, play a land. Pass the turn. Well, I mean, maybe we still have a chance. We do have this teamer battle rage. Bone at Delver. It's a ooh mana leak. All right. That is that is concerning. A braids gets in hits us. Oh, play a mountain. Crash through. Draw a card. So this is two five eight nine. Oh, mutagenic growth. Go to combat. Attack. Team or battle rage. Opponent has the force negation. Um. Yeah, all right, hit you for six. Yeah, this. <laughs> this is the nightmare matchup. We've dealt way more than twenty damage, but opponents had every. Every possible answer. Poet it. Another Tarmogoyf goes to combat, gets in with the Delver, hits us. Don't go to combat. Attack. Try it again. Opponents only got two cards in hand. If they block with the Goyf, though, we don't have lethal, I don't think. So attack with Soul Scar Mage. Um, Brute Force. Battle Rage. So this is getting for six. So we can get up to eight. That's 16. Goyf is eating five. So I think we just Lava Dart Delver and Lava Dart Delver. We don't have lethal anyway, but we get to hit our opponent to four. Oh my God. Am I? Okay. I guess that's, yeah, that makes sense. Opponent plays another Goyf and Young Pyromancer. Now well, we pass the turn. Huh. So, ugh. I don't think we end up winning this, but considering our opponent gained, I don't even know, 30 life or something with that weather the storm, 20 some life, this is still a pretty impressive performance for our deck that we managed to, that we managed to get our opponent to four. We've dealt close to 40 damage through a braid and force of negation and all that stuff. So we are, oh. Impressive. Not winning, I don't think, but impressive. Bone it. Untapping. Drawing. No. Oh, no. They're going to make so many, so many dorks. Place and land. Bases. Uh, crash through. Draw a card. I'll go to combat attack. I think we are going for it. I don't know if this is lethal, but we got to do what we can. Attack. Opponent blocks with the Goyf. And the Pyromancer. And the Pyromancer. Sure, so we will mana morphos, add some mana, draw a mountain, pyretic ritual, mutagenic growth, brute force. <laughs> oh, found it. Oh, it's lethal. Oh, my goodness. Holy moly! Wow! Wow! That is absurd. That is... <laughs> wow, I can't believe that happened! Opponent gained so much life. It played so many goifs and two young firemancers and force of negation to key spell. And we still got there. All right. All right, all right. Well, uh, that did work somehow <laughs> i think we definitely want another now that we see what our opponent's doing we definitely want more lava darts lava dart seems really helpful uh young pyromancer and elver are good targets for it maybe we get on one ritual a little less explosive but mm, all right well we can swipe down random dorks no kiln fiend but braiding pool for our opponent untapped delver of secrets sure I'll play a mountain, play Swift Spear, Gutshot Delver. Whoa! Okay, interesting. Opponent goes immediate Force of Negation. They really want that Delver. Well, let's see if they flip it. If they don't flip it, we still get to Lava Dart it. Opponent, Delver, does it flip? Oh, the Delver luck comes through! Comes through, comes through! All right, that's uh, that's not great for us that the Delver Luck came through. Opponent, Lightning Bolt gets and hits us. We draw even more lands. Well, we'll play Soul Scar Mage. 
and pass the turn. Wow, what a blowout. Opponent got pretty rewarded for that force of uh, negation. Delver for our opponent. Gets in, hits us. Oh, no. Oh, that's so many lands. Well, Lava Dart. And Lava Dart. Kill the Delver. All right, Mana League. Ooh, this is not good. Hit you for three. So we shrunk the Delver. Shrinking the Delver something. We've also drawn six of our 16 lands. Opponent gets in with the Delver. And has a, t oh no, has a Tarmogoyf. Well, we will crash through. Mm. All right. Yeah, I think they got us. Oh, I wonder if we played that wrong. We wanted to cast our spells during our turn because of because of our prowess creatures, but that allowed our opponent to force of negation. I guess I was not expecting our opponent to force of negation. Oh, opponent's got it all. They got every bit. Well, pass the turn. Yeah, I think they got us. Oh, man. Do they have the ultimate Delver luck? Opponent does, and we will scoop it up. All right. Oh, Delver luck. Delver luck, Delver luck. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. We got to see the power of our deck in game two, fighting through a ridiculous amount of hate. Uh, game three and game one, I think, are characterized by our opponent blind flipping Delvers every time. Uh, opponent pretty good for roughly having a 50-50 shot of flipping a Delver. Opponent did a pretty good job of hitting their 50-50 shots. And you could see the one game where they didn't blind flip. Uh, in this game, they blind flip multiple times to seal the win. Uh, the one game where they didn't blind flip is the game where they lost. Jeez. Our good cards were going to come, but a little too late with the Delvers blind flipping. Hmm. All right. I guess you can't win every single one. A little disappointed, though. All right. Budget magic time. We are raging in modern. Uh, blistering rage, actually. We should probably call it mono red kiln fiend now, I guess. Because we don't actually have blister coil weird anymore. It's been uh <laughs> it's been upgraded. Uh we will keep this though. We're on the draw, but I mean we have kiln fiend. We don't we're like a double strike away, uh so double strike spell would just win us the game on turn three. Assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, of course. Uh, what might a one drop to turn on these light up the stages, perhaps? Oh, boy. All right. Well, now we are further away from winning, I would say. Takes a light up the stage. That means they can kill Kiln Fiend, I'm sure. Ugh. Another mountain is not what we were hoping for. Light up the stage helps us get through Flood, but Field of Ruin, that's not going to do much. And Bob. Yeah. Well, play a mountain. Play a Kiln Fiend. Definitely worried about just, like, Liliana. Liliana, take down, kill Kiln Fiend. Opponent seems to be land light, but... <clears throat> but... Bob will probably solve that. Assassin's Trophy. And... Tar oh, come on, double strike spell. <laughs> double strike spell just straight up wins us the game. Oh, another mountain. Well, in that case, we will play a Kiln Fiend. Past the turn on four. Actually, can we attack? Let's attack. You know what? Let's not attack. Pass the turn. Dark Confidant. Luris. Main deck Luris. Opponent's down to 12. Not doing a great job of hitting lands. Hex Drinker. Okay. And starts leveling. Boy, we have some draws that just win us a game here. Opponent. Passes. Manamorphos. Well, play a mountain. Go to combat. Attack. And see what our opponent does. Blocks. And blocks. Well, we get to... Man... Do we even Manamorphose? Yeah, it's Manamorphose. Manamorphose trigger. We could still just hit double strike to win. Oh, Metagenicross is not bad. Ugh, all right, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have Trample, though. So this... We're just going to kill all of our opponent's creatures. Except for Dark Confidant. But we don't actually get to kill our opponent and we still don't get to light up the stage all right pass the turn yeah i mean that's not exciting dark confidant opponent down to 10 hits another goif and a tap land and the goif and soul scar mage well we will light up the stage 
Trigger Kiln Fiends. See what we find. Ooh, there's Battle Rage. And a Manamorphose. All right, play the Mountain. Manamorphose. This should, this should do it. I don't think our opponent has big enough butts to survive this team or Battle Rage. <laughs> they can soak up a bit of damage, but not enough. Well, Battle Rage you. So we're going to have, what, 10 power double striker? And yeah, we don't even have to attack with other Kiln Fiend. Opponent done! Done, done, done! Wow! Through the Thought Seas. That was a little scary because our opponent had had that Inquisition on turn one to take one of our threats. They didn't take our creature, though, which is a very odd choice. I assumed when they didn't take our creature, it meant that they just had a Fatal Push or something, but they didn't actually have a Fatal Push. So our Kiln Fiend stuck around, and if our Kiln Fiend stick around, we will win eventually. Like, we will find the Trample and the Double Strike, and our opponent will die. Like, that is a thing that will happen. Um, hmm. I think what I'm most interested in is Lava Darts. Our opponent seems to be a kind of like aggro Golgari deck. We saw Bobs. We also saw Hex Drinker, both of which tend to get got by Lava Dart. Maybe we go down a Gut Shot. Maybe we go down one Ritual. Maybe we go down a Brute Force, since uh, even though it's nice as a Pump Spell, it doesn't save us from Golgari-style interaction. And run it like that. Yeah, all right. I like this hand. We'll see if it gets torn apart by discard spells. That is kind of what Golgari does. Inquisition. Takes our Soul Scar Mage. Uh, play a Mountain and pass the turn. No reason to just crash through since we have Kiln Fiend. We also were kind of lucky with our opponent having some stumbly land draws there. Tab land. And ugh, more discard. All right. That's not exciting. So both of our creatures down. That is one of the drawbacks, I think, of being on the draw rather than the play, is things like that can happen. Well, we have some we have some stuff if we never draw a creature. Opponent. Gonna go if. Ugh. Hmm. Alright, pass the turn. Sort of battle raid flooded. Those two two discard spells, pretty good. Cast a lock wing for our opponent. Alright. Gets and hits us for five. Well, we don't have that much time to draw a creature. Lava dart. You know, I'm not a fan of this, but we have to Manamorphose to try to find a creature. It's a land. Ooh! Yeah, this is, a, this is a little stumbly for our deck. Finally getting to be on the play next game will be beneficial, though. Next game, our opponent can't just Thought Seize our one drop. So we're actually, hopefully, going to be able to get some pressure going. Opponent down, hits us to nine. Has another Goyf, which is lethal. We draw Swift Spear. Well, play Swift Spear. Unfortunately, I don't think I don't think we can win this turn. We can cast a bunch of spells, but I don't not a lethal amount with a swift spear. Alright, so well, pyretic ritual. We'll see. I don't think so though. Lava dart you. I didn't actually do the math. We're gonna find out. Uh lava dart you. Gut shot you. Battle rage you. Yeah. We end up we end up just short. Alright. Well, for how bad that went, we were actually close to just one-shotting our opponent. <laughs> we maybe should not have shown our opponent all those cards, honestly, but let's run it back. That was awkward. That was awkward. Those thought seasons were really good. Hopefully, we can get off on a faster foot here now that we are on the play. All right, we'll keep this. Unfor so, bad news is we don't have a one-drop. Good news is we have two Kiln Fiends, so even if our opponent takes a Kiln Fiend, we still have another one. So, they are going to have to have... An actual factual removal spell. Ooh, all right. I'll play a land. Play Kiln Fiend. I'm expecting. Gotta be, gotta be removal here. Opponent cracks. We have a lethal combination of spells in hand. If our opponent just taps out for a creature, next turn, next turn should be lethal. Oh, is this brutality? Oh, wait. If it's brutality, we can mutagenic growth. Yeah. Wow, three modes. Okay. Uh, well, we will... We will mutagenic growth. Our opponent can take our team or battle rage, though. Which means we don't have lethal this turn. Yeah, takes battle rage. Well, play kiln feed. Play a mountain. Crash through. Hit you for four. And see what else our opponent has. Down to 17. Overgrown tube. Tapped. Opponent passes. Well, let's... Assault Strobe, Kill and Fiend. Go to combat. Attack. Um, Pyretic Ritual? I'm assuming this means our opponent has removal. All right. Opponent has Assassin's Trophy. Well, yeah, let's Brute Force. 
Not quite lethal. We hit our opponent for a ton, down to four. But opponent's not dead. Ugh. Yeah, having to spend that, yeah, that collective brutality, even with us fizzling the removal mode, was still really good for our opponent. And now we are totally out of cards, which is not great. Castle Lockway. Probably not going to be super helpful at four life. Wow. All right, opponent. No fear. No fear at all. Well, um, hmm. This is really interesting. <laughs> Do we lava dart the Bob? Opponent is leaving up two mana, so they could have another Assassin's Trophy. The other option is to let the Bob live and lava dart our opponent. If our opponent hits anything that's two or more mana, then lava dart is just going to the face is lethal. Oh, yeah. I think I think we let the Bob live this turn. Oh, oh, it's so tricky. It's really tough. Why did they leave up that two mana? But then they could hit a land and play another creature, and then it becomes harder and harder for us to actually kill them. Yeah, all right, we're gonna we're gonna trust in Bob. And Bob we trust. Come on, two drop at least. Two drop at least. Oh, one drop. <laughs> so close. Phone plays a land. Luris. Recast Tarmagoyf. Come on, gut shot. Come on, gut shot. Oh, we draw a mountain. All right, come, Bob, come on. Don't do this to us, Bob. Please, please do not do this to us. Pass the turn. Do we punt? Maybe we... Come on, Bob. Come on. All right, abrupt decay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Our faith in Bob seems to have paid off. Opponent. Abrupt decays. Ping. Oh, we got there. All right. <laughs> I don't know if we played that correctly or not. It's possible that... With how that played out, it's possible that we should have just killed the Bob and tried to attack for lethal, but it worked. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, our, our faith, our faith in Dark Confidant, getting our opponent low enough for that Lava Dart. Yeah, I don't know. With how it played out, it seemed like maybe our opponent had Land Lurus in hand and was just bluffing with the mana. And if we had just like Lava Darted and attacked, we would have won immediately. But we got there in the end. We got there in the end. Whew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, kill feed. Taking down the Tarmogoyves. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, budget magic time. We are looking to... Oh, this hand, this hand. We're going to keep this. We are going to keep this. <laughs> I think we're actually going to turn one gut shot. Light it. Well, hmm. Let's Soul Scar Mage. That makes the most sense. This hand is has a lot of action. We just need to... Basically hit Landra. Oh, is this Boggles? Oh, uh, uh, give her runes. All right, so opponent's probably comboing. Kiln Fiend. So I think what we do is go to combat, attack, see if our opponent blocks by some chance, which would be spectacular. No blocks. Well, we will light up the stage. Go looking for lands. We do need to hit lands. Ooh, gut shot. Oh, this is not ideal. Gut shot, giver of runes. Gut shot, giver of runes. Pass the turn. Hmm. Yeah, whiffing on lands is pretty rough. We don't need a lot of lands, but we would like to play these Kiln Fiends. We even have the Crash Through and the Mutagenic Growth. Like, these Kiln Fiends, even without Double Strike, can get big. Devoted Druid. All right, opponent's trying to get the combo set up. Well, we got to Crash Through because we need a land to have any chance here. Ooh, dear. All right, we might just get comboed. Well, our deck does only run 16 lands. We are as low as we can get because we do want a critical amount of spells, but... We do need uh we do need more than more than one. Is this collected company? Okay. How do they batter skull? Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Alright. Hmm. Well, play a land. Kiln feed. This batter skull is gonna make things challenging because it's gonna gain our opponent life. We're gonna have to go really big. And there's still a chance that we just get comboed off. Opponent gets and hits us. Uh yeah, we'll take it. Down to 12. Plays a land. Giver. Birds. Hmm. Oh, if we wait another turn, this is going to have protection. Oh, play another Kiln Fiend. I guess we just got to kind of go for it next turn and hope. Although, this Batter Skull is going to make it hard. If it was normal creatures, I think there's a decent chance we win next turn. But with our opponent going up to 28, less convinced. Oh dear, Stoneforge. Getting sort of light and shadow has a land. Plays it. 
equips it. Oh, this is so much life. Gets in. Yeah. <laughs> 24, 27, yeah. This uh, this batter skull, I think, is going to get us. Bone it passes. Well, batter skull mixed with us missing land drops, so we will crash through, draw a card. We're going to have to hit Team or Battle Rage, I think, to have any shot. Mountain. Yeah, now we can't win. Hmm. All right. Well, that was awkward. We missed our land drops, and our opponent had turn three batter skull? Huh. So I think we need lightning bolts. And we might go lava darts. And we might even want smash to smithereens, even though it's a little risky. We'll go down the one assault strobe. We'll go down uh, gut shots. Maybe trim a light up the stage. Brute force cash th uh, crash through. Uh, teamer battle rage? Ugh, something like that. Well, we get to be on the play this game, and if we can just get a fast draw, this deck isn't going to be able to keep up with us. We get to play first. No creatures. Well, no creatures, no keep. No lands. Uh-oh. Well, this is not what we were hoping for. All right, we will keep. I guess we put Swift Sir Ritual to the bottom, or Land Ritual. I don't know... Now we have no spells and not many cards. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Pwn it. Temple Garden untapped. Birds of Paradise. And. Oh, that is a battle rage. Um. Kiln Fiend. Well, I mean, this does give us some amount of hope. If we can draw another free spell, we could get the one shot. Pwn it. Devoted Druid. Smash. Well, we will play Kiln Fiend. Pass the turn. And what do you got, Pwn it? Stoneforge Mystic for Batter Skull. Uh huh. And Noble Hierarch. Yeah. I'll play him out and go to combat attack. Unfortunately, we can't win this turn. So we'd hit for 8, 12, 13, 14. Actually, you know what? I think that's good enough. Let's team our Battle Rage. Because this means when our opponent puts a. puts Batter Skull into play, we can just smash it and win. Oddly, you can see you can see how uh, I don't think I mentioned this pun, but we played our second kiln fiend without attacking first, and our opponent wouldn't have blocked. So not doing that actually cost us two points of damage, and our opponent's at two. It's not gonna matter because of smash, but that was definitely a mistake. Always attack first uh, because no one's gonna block this deck. Ooh, lava dart. Um, yeah, it's lava dollar noble hierarch. Opponent floats, a mana, sure. Lava dart, birds of paradise. Get our triggers. Go to combat. All right, here comes batter skull. So now we don't even actually need to attack to win. We just smash it. Well, a little bit of a pun, but still good. We still got there. Oh, all right. Well, uh, through batter skull, technically. On the mold of five. <laughs> I guess in some ways this, that shows the power of this deck that we can mulligan to five that we can mulligan to five and still and punt and still get the win kill if he does busted stuff if it doesn't get killed it really does it's really it's really really powerful um okay this is fine how much damage can we do with the soul scar mage quite a bit is it lethal so we can play soul scar this is plus one yeah we're not gonna bolt the bird uh, we're going to play Soul Scar. So let's see. Soul Scar Mage, it's a 1 1, but it gets prowess. So we cast Pyrrhic Ritual, that's 2 power. Mutagenic Growth, 3 4 power. 5 power, 6 power. Ooh, Viridian Longbow, that's interesting. Another ritual. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, that's, that might be lethal. Go to combat, attack. Is this lethal? Is this the turn two kill? So we, okay. So two. So this goes to two power, three power, four, five, six power, seven power, eight power, plus three. Oh my God, this lethal. Pyretic ritual, trigger. Oh my God, combo. Turn two, we turn two them. Pyretic ritual, unless we're miscounting, which is always a risk. Pyretic ritual, mutagenic growth. So that's six power. Teamer Battle Rage. 
seven power, so that's 14. Lightning bolt your face. Is that exactly 19? I think that's exactly 19. 16 from Soul Scar Mage and three from. Ah! <laughs> Turn two kill! Turn two kill! Whoa! With just the Soul Scar Mage! <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even killed feed. That's turn two with Soulscar. Well, that is why you play Team Battle Rage and the Rituals. That is ex <laughs> that is exactly it. Uh, yeah, that is uh, that is that is why you play Blistering Rage. Exactly because the deck can do that. Like uh, that's tough to beat. That's tough to be. I mean, even you could say, okay, your opponent could block, but really, are you gonna? <laughs> Are you going to expect to get 19 by a single Skull Scar Mage with two lands? When you look at that, you think it is literally impossible. You think that that just can't happen. But in our deck, it can. And uh, and it does. It did. <laughs> oh, well, Blistering Rage still working. So he's like, all right, budget magic time. We are Kiln Fiending in Modern this week. Updated Blistering Rage. And, eh, okay. No Kiln Fiend, but this hand's reasonable. We got damage. We got free spells. And even some card draw, technically, sort of. Metamorphos is a really good magic card. <laughs> Especially considering it does nothing. Uh, Mishra's Bobble, sure. And cracks it. Wooded Foothill. So this is probably some sort of Death Shadow deck. Cracks it. And Inquisition. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes the swift spear. Yeah, what do we draw? Another land. Another land, not the best. We'll play Soul Scar Mage. We would like to draw non lands primarily. Well, threat one, Soul Scar Mage. Stomping rounds. Untapped. Down to 15. And Tarmogoyf. Already a 4 5. Okay. Sure. Opponent passes. Teamer Battle Rage. Well, hmm. So this will be two, three, well, yeah, go to combat, attack. Let's see what happens. Go to combat, attack you. See if our opponent blocks. No. All right, so let's Manamorphose. I mean, if we get lucky, it's not impossible we win this turn. Like, Mutagenic Growth would be great. Add some mana. <gasps> Mutagenic Growth, that is great. Uh, Mutagenic Growth, you Soulscar Mage? So now I think we win <laughs> on turn two. Hey, you should have blocked. Gut shot you. Yeah, that was uh, that was a perfect draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit you down to 14. Teamer battle rage and good game. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was not even a great hand. And that's the turn two kill. Through an Inquisition and a Tarmogoyf. That is the beauty of this deck is people won't block it. People don't expect to die from 15 or whatever on turn two. And opponent, yeah, realizes they are dead. That was exact -sies. I mean, we did get a little lucky to top deck mutagenic growth. That was that was the one card, I think, that was lethal there. <laughs> but uh, we top decked it, and uh, yeah, that's the game. <laughs> oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have great sideboard cards for what our opponent's doing. I assume it's Jun Death Shadow. What is our... Hmm. Maybe our plan just stays the same. Maybe we go down the Assault Strobe. The Lightning Bolts do seem decent. At least some Lightning Bolts. Maybe you don't want Ritual and try it like that. <laughs> oh, this deck's sweet. This deck's... This deck's definitely sweet. Oh. Yeah, I mean... That's why you play the deck. Ooh, okay. Yes, and, uh... The sand is like a teamer battle rage away from being very lethal. I mean, assuming our opponent doesn't just kill all of our stuff, but we'll see. We are on the draw, so our opponent does get to you. Thought Caesar Inquisition us before you get to do anything. But even just like Kiln Fiend, Manamorphose, Manamorphose Ritual, that makes Kiln Fiend really big. Black Leaf Glyphs, and. Ooh, no discard? Alright. I like no discard. More lands. Eh. Well, land and Schwiffspia. Go to combat, attack. And Fatal Bush. Sure. Well, we'd rather have our Swift Spear die than our Kiln Fiend die. Kiln Fiend's a card that can just kill our opponent most easily. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. We would really like this Kiln Fiend to live, though. And Goyf? 
Mm, okay, that's that's pretty fine. Wow, discarding the lightning bolt. Hmm. Okay. Well, I can take a free spell. Why would you discard the lightning bolt? Maybe our opponent's just like, that's insane to me. Maybe our opponent's just flooded with removal? That seems like the craziest thing imaginable against our deck. Well, Kiln Fiend go. And we have lethal next turn if our opponent does not have more discard or removal. If they just play a creature, we win. Swamp. Okay, they do have more bolts. So now we really need to find a creature. Opponent's almost out of cards, but we are completely out of creatures at the moment. And a goyf. All right, that is sort of a clock. Opponent's out of cards. Can we draw a creature? Oh my god, that's Kiln Fiend. All right, can our opponent top deck another removal spell or a discard spell? If not, our opponent is dead next turn. Almost certainly. Pwned it. What's the draw? What's the draw? Oh my god, lightning bolt number three off the top! Ooh, all right, so opponents, uh, opponents top decked it. Okay, that's unfortunate. Well, now we're back to needing to find a creature, which is, wow, that is unlucky. All right, we will metamorphose. Our opponent definitely deserves to be punished for discarding that lightning bolt, but it looks like they might not be because they keep top decking more lightning bolts. Opponent gets in with Tarmogoyf, hits us, down to 12. Now they draw the land. We draw a land. Oh, no. Not like this. Oh, opponent. Oh, that's brutal. That is so brutal. If our opponent's cards were in the opposite order, they're dead right now. But they drew the lightning bolt instead of the land. Tarmogoyf hits us to nine. Now they draw. Okay, another land. Oh, deck. Why, magic gods? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, our opponent was blessed by the magic gods for sure. So now we have to top deck Monastery Swift Spear. Wow, did our opponent... Oh boy, that is that is pretty fortunate. Gets it. Hits us, down to two. Well, Swift Spear wins us the game, otherwise we're dead. Light up the stage, not going to do it here. Well, we will light up the stage, and we will concede. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well... I mean, I guess I guess it's only fair that we lose once in a while. We can't just win 100% of the time. Mostly just disappointed because of how we lost that game. Not so much that we lost. More more the how of uh, our opponent running them out of removal and illogically discarding removal and then getting rewarded for it. That's That's the frustrating part. That our opponent discarded their best card <laughs> in Lightning Bolt, and then the Magic Gods rewarded them for for uh, that not very not very smart play. This hand is not exactly what we want, but we'll keep it. We're not going to run out of creatures. Well, hit you for one. Unfortunately, we have no spells, which is not ideal. And we have many lands. We actually have a quarter of the lands in our deck, in our opening hand, which is... A pretty high percentage for a 16 land deck. Opponent down to 19. Gonna do Mishra's Bobbly things. Yeah. Cracks Mishra's Bobble. Plays Verdant Catacombs. Cracks Verdant Catacombs. Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. And passes. Uh, come on, spells. Well, I guess Lightning Bolt's sort of a spell. I mean, it is a spell. Well, play him out and play Kiln Fiend. Go attacking. Hit our opponent down to 17. Pass the turn. And let's see what our opponent's got. Collective Brutality is pretty annoying. Taking our spell and killing Kiln Fiend. Blackleaf Cliffs. And they do have Collective Brutality. Oh, goodness. Kills the Swift Spear. Interesting. And gains life? We draw even more lands. That's not great. Go to combat. We really need to stop drawing all lands. We're up to five out of our 16 here. Opponent untaps, plays a swamp, plays Liliana, takes down. We sack Soulscar Mage. Come on, Battle Rage. Opponent passing. I think Battle Rage is lethal. So, okay, land number six. Well, the good news is there's only... The good news is there's only... Uh, only 10 lands left in our deck out of our 50 cards. So our odds of continuing to draw lands are really small. 20% of our deck is lands now. Opponent has the lightning bolt. Yeah, it looks like the magic gods might just want 
our opponent to win this match, unfortunately. There's a Tarmogoyf. Another Lightning Bolt that doesn't do anything. Well, we will play the land and pass the turn. Opponent goes to combat. Gets and hits us. Yeah. Sure. Down to 12. Damping Sphere. Okay. Opponent passes. That's a ritual. We will pass the turn. Yeah, and it looks like... Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Huh. Well, this is a... Uh, this is magic. Sometimes you just get the get the game, the match that you just kind of have the math <laughs> go against you multiple times. And that is... That is what's happening this match. And uh, yeah, we're dead. Huh. Well, that was something. From a mathematical percentage, I think we were like... 90% roughly to win game number two and win the match. Uh, judging by the amount of removal our opponent would have in their deck. So we're like roughly 90% to win game two and we didn't. And then in this game, this might be, this might be calculator worthy. I mean, considering we're a 16 land deck, uh, drawing six in our top nine is kind of is kind of bad like what how often will that happen just because 16 is such a low number it's got to be it's got to be pretty small yeah so so uh seven in every thousand games all right well i mean that's magic crazy things happen sometimes and uh it was our turn for the crazy things to happen to us unfortunately they happen in a way that kept us from winning but yeah Magic. So what did we learn this week about the 2020 edition of Blistering Rage? Not featuring Blister Coil Weird, of course. And overall, we went 3-2 and two with the deck. Although, oh my goodness, that Jun match. I still can't believe we lost that. Like, the odds of us winning that were so high in so many ways. But anyway, I mean, we saw the power of the deck. The deck can win incredibly quickly. And thanks to some of the new additions to the deck, like Light Up the Stage in specific, we have more of an ability to go long than we had in the past because we can just, like, play some dorks and then draw some cards and play some dorks and cast some pump spells and get there over the course of several turns. So we have this powerful combination of these nut draws. I think over the course of our five matches, I believe we had two turn two kills, which, I mean, that means it's happening not, you know, a super high percentage of the time, but almost 10% of the time we're killing on turn two, and that was often through blockers, because the most hilarious part of the deck is our opponent is not expecting to die when we attack with a one-two with prowess and have two lands on the battlefield, and they're at, like, 19 life, 15 life. You feel very safe there. There's no way you're going to risk your blocker, but with the right combination of cards, we actually do just win the game there on tier two. So the power is definitely there to win the game quickly. Of course, we also get to see the hard matchups for the deck. And even though we should have won that Jun matchup, I think, or not should have, that's the wrong way to put it. If we played that match the way it went like a hundred times, I think we win like 85 of them or some really high percentage because of how the top decks went. But it is true that heavy removal decks can be tough for the deck. While we have this super high level of power, in some sense, we are a little glass cannony and if our opponent can go you know fatal push your first thing fatal push your second thing lightning bolt your third thing then things go really bad because we get stuck with these games where we have all of our creatures killed and then we just draw a bunch of like brute forces and mutagenic gross and double strike spells and if we don't have a creature they don't do anything so there is risk to the plan even though light up the stage does help fight through that but the reward is super high the super fast super hilarious kills that no one expects on tour two and that's why you play the deck because you can could jake people out really quickly really hilariously with kiln fiend and friends so i really like the deck i think it's actually fairly competitive and it's super super cheap i mean for being a fairly competitive modern deck 78 bucks doesn't really get much better than that so anyway that's blistering rage 2020 if you got ideas for a better name now that blister coil weird itself is not in the deck let me know in the comments i hope you enjoyed it thanks so much for watching and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here